A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. That the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed, either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We always pray for you. Paul tells the Thessalonians something that we probably tell others all the time. How often do we tell someone, I'll pray for you, or I'll keep her in my prayers? Hopefully, we follow through on our intentions. Even more so, I hope that we pray on our own behalf and build a relationship with our Heavenly Father. A long time ago in 2005, at least I feel like it feels like a long time ago, I had graduated from college and was on the job hunt. It took me a few months to find a job. I was sending out resumes and applications, making phone calls and going on interviews. It was a stressful time, but all the while I kept in touch with college friends. But one particular call with a friend really struck me. After the usual catching up and updating each other on everything, she said to me, it must be wonderful to have so much time to spend with the Lord. It must be wonderful to have so much time to spend with the Lord. I was going to Mass on Sunday and going to confession regularly, but what was I doing Monday through Friday? Was I going to daily mass? No. Was I reading scripture? No. Was I watching the 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. block of court shows? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Judge Judy, the People's Court, Texas Justice, Judge Alex, Divorce Court. These were my daily devotions. (laughs) But within a week of that call, I began attending daily mass and reading the word of God regularly. But a bigger change that I noticed was that I began to pray. I didn't pray because there was some obligation, because I had to, or because there was some kind of peer pressure. I prayed because I wanted to. I wanted to build that closer relationship with God. I began to pray for myself, but also for friends and family, for strangers, and for all people. I believe that we are fortunate here to live in a community that prays together and often. Prayer, one of our four pillars, connects us with our Lord, with each other, and with our world. Prayer ultimately keeps us grounded. The Thessalonians are told to slow down and not to jump to conclusions, not to let anyone shake them up over some breathless report or alleged letter to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. Prayer calms us, instructs us, enriches us. The day of the Lord is at hand. But should we make reckless choices or prayerful ones? Coming back to the scriptures, it says, We pray that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. God is already here. We don't have to search for him. We just have to want him. God is with us and wants us to be close to him. We just have to ask. We communally pray pray the liturgy of the hours. We come together for mass and we have our own private prayers and devotions. We have countless examples of prayer among the saints. And we even have a glorious example in our own Holy Father Dominic and his nine ways of prayer. 
my prayer is that we realize how close God is to us and that we persevere and that we know how blessed we truly are. How wonderful it is to have so much time to spend with the Lord.